Thank you for inviting me to speak to you today. Um, I will talk about the 905 in very general terms, build on what Luce already showed you, and then focus on Markham Center in Markham itself. But before I do that, I'd like to share with you some trends that we should keep in mind as we go through this morning's agenda. Uh, the Canadian household is changing. A generation ago, 50% of all households were families with children. Today, uh, just over a quarter uh, have, uh, of households have children. Almost three quarters do not have children. That trend is not going to change. What does it mean for housing? We need to figure that out. Uh, millennials are the biggest demographic group that we have in Canada, both in terms of population and the workplace. As you can see, um, in the third group down there, millennials and Gen X and boomers are pretty much equal in terms of um, participation in the labor force. In fact, it looks alarmingly like our polls for the general election right now. But uh, what you'll find is that uh, while millennials are only 37% of the workforce today, in 15 years, they're going to double that participation to 75%. That's a huge change. So anything we talk about in the future is really about how do we accommodate millennials, both as uh, residents and as employees. The nature of work is also changing. In the GTA, only 10% of the workforce is involved in manufacturing. 50% are involved in office jobs. That's us. And so if you look at it, it's a mixture of not just millennials, but gen millennials, Gen Xs, and boomers. And so whatever millennials want are also what boomers and uh, Gen Xs want in terms of office, access to uh, r recreation, to shops, to food, access to transit, etc. So keep that in mind as we go through the numbers from here on. Um, and I'll talk about the future rather than what we are doing today in the 905 for the uh, Gen Ys. In the next 25 years, the GTA is going to grow by 3 million people, of which about half a million is uh, Toronto's share, but 2.5 million is the share of the 905. This is like building a new Toronto within the 905 in the next 25 years with everything that that population needs. How are our regions and our municipalities set up to absorb that? And what kind of growth are we going to see? These are important questions that we need to figure out. If you look at offices, for example, right now um, the, the chart on the upper left shows that today in, in 2011 we had 200 million square feet of office space in the GTA. Of that, uh, most of it was in downtown Toronto, as you can see, way down in the bottom. But uh, the 905 had 66 million square feet, or one-third of the total uh, office space uh, spread out throughout the GTA. It didn't have any transit. In fact, if you look at the numbers, over half the 200 million square feet of office space does not have transit access. That's 54% or 108 million square feet. That's why we have gridlock. Where do we have the growth? Um, a lot of it is happening in places like Meadowvale Airport Corporate Center, in addition to Toronto. Uh, in fact, if you look at this map, you'll find there's a big disconnect between policy and market reality. Those little yellow squares, can you see them? Those are identified as urban growth centers by uh, the Growth Secretariat, which is the Places to Grow document. Yet, apart from downtown Toronto, we have not really seen any office space being developed at these centers. In fact, if you look at Mississauga City Center, do you know what, can you see where that is? Just below Airport Corporate Center, there's a square. Mississauga City Center has not had a new office building in 20 years. All the growth is happening when Lisa's working at the Airport Corporate Center. In fact, Airport Corporate Center, which has no real transit to speak of, has over 6 million square feet of office space, which is equal to the amount of office space at Young and Bloor with two subways. So if you're going to get, and uh, look at the bottom line, if you're going to get 60 million more square feet of office space in the next, by 2031, and 20 million square feet of that comes to the 905, using the same one-third, two-third number, how are we going to serve this population with transit? And how are we going to take care of the 2.5 million people with the kind of transit system we have. Look at this map for Metrolinx. This shows what they're going to build by 2031. In the next 15 years, all they're going to have is the TTC and uh, the goal lines. That's it. There's no line connecting across the top all the regions in the 905. 
no transit at all. Compare that to Frankfurt, population of about the same as Metro, as the GTA, and their rail line, or Munich, which has a similar area, and look at their rail line. Okay, I won't describe the boundaries of Markham. You know pretty much what it is. Down at the bottom, it's Steeles, to the right is Rouge Valley, to the left, Young Street, and uh, 404. We are going to grow, double in terms of both population and employment between 2006 and 2041. And the way council has decided to do that is that 80% of this growth is going to happen within our existing urban boundaries, which is south of Major Mac. All that growth is really focused along Highway 7, which is where we have Viva as the dedicated bus line. And the two major growth areas are the ones in pink. The one in the west is uh, Langstaff, which will happen if we ever get our Young Street subway extension, and Markham Center, which is the pink blob in the middle. Here's Markham Center, if you can see it. Um, it's basically from Warden to Kennedy and Highway 7 at the top to 407 at the bottom. It's about 1,000 acres, but a river runs through it. That's the Rouge, and so we have about 700 net development acres. This shows you a map of all the development applications that are in there. Um, the circle at the top left is City Hall. Uh, the circle at the bottom right is the Mobility Hub, which will be a combination of uh, Go Transit, YRT, Viva. Uh, TTC also comes in there, plus um, the MTO 407 interregional route, which will happen, I think, in 25 years. Um, and the circle to the right of that is York University, a site that the, uh, York chose uh, just a few months ago. The two major landowners are south of the river, which you see in that last squiggly line is uh, Remington, and north of that squiggly line uh, to the north up to Highway 7 is Times. So Remington has about 250 acres, Times is about 120 or so. Um, Markham Center is based again on creating a high density, mixed use, transit supportive, pedestrian focused uh, downtown. It's really based on creating a pattern of streets and blocks, a mid rise environment, lots of things going on there to create an urban buzz based on really having good streetscapes. And we're really trying hard to get exactly this kind of a streetscape. Uh, we're putting in, in some areas stuff like silver cells, which is a technical term for supporting trees uh, with soil volume in urban conditions. But um, we're getting a lot of buildings coming up right now. Um, the big thing about this is that because of the airport, uh, we have a height limit because this is all in the flight path. But uh, the airport's supposed to close in a few years, and we'll see what happens with buildings at that point. We have about one and a half million square feet of office space right now, uh, either built or under construction, and we have about 8,000 units occupied. Interesting example of Aviva is that it's a reinsurance company headquartered in London, England. We poached them from Toronto. They used to be in the wilds of Scarborough, where there was no transit, nothing to look forward to when you walk outside, no coffee shop, no restaurant, no dry cleaners, no walking environment. They decided to come here with their 2,000 people because they're going to have access to the GO station, they're going to have access to all the other facilities that Markham Center is building. And this is the way to sort of build up the synergy. Um, we've also got a hotel and condos with a retail on the ground floor, more apartments. Uh, two interesting examples, the Pan Am Center, and the next one, which is York University. This was done because Markham, as a city, invested in buying land from an old factory about 300 meters from the uh, GO station. When the Pan Am bid came around, we offered this piece of land, and with Infrastructure Ontario, we built this facility, but we got a legacy building that is paid for by uh, one-third by, uh, by all of you and me, and two-thirds by the city of Markham. So we, got, we paid 67 cents to the dollar to get this facility. And when York University was looking around, we offered them a five-acre piece of land valued at $15 million, saying, come here, and it's right next to the, sub uh, to the GO station and next to uh, Pan Am Center. The benefit for us to having a university is that now we can keep kids in the 905 going to high school, 
then finally not having to leave to go to university somewhere else, but staying in Markham, going to university, finding jobs in Markham, and therefore keeping the millennials and their future kids in town. And that really makes a big difference in how we look at all the ec economic growth that can happen with the university as part of the story. Thanks.